All right, I'm going to take another stab at explaining what's going on with this project. Okay. <laughs> now, what they say is, they say use this framework as a basis for a repeated period. The first phrase is what they've given you. I'm going to go ahead and write a double bar there. They say the second phrase should begin and end in D major. Now that's that's where they screwed up because really the second phrase begins in D major but is going to contain a first ending. So forget that second phrase begins and ends in D major. Just go right to the second phrase, phrase begins in D major and it has a first ending that modulates back to F using some of the modulatory technique discussed in this chapter. Wow, look at that straight line I just drew. That was kind of fun. Automatic straight line. Okay, so during this first ending right here in this section, we are going to make our way back to the key of F major. It begins with a direct modulation in D, this phrase. This is in F. Okay? So at the end of that, then, there's a repeat sign. Comes back to the top. Then there will be a second ending that stays in D major. So this is just still in D major and cadencing in D major. Okay? That's the end result. That's what you're going to do. What they were talking about is they wanted you to compose this D major to D major thing first so you have a complete picture of the, the D major phrase and then go back and, and compose a first ending. But I think that's a silly way to explain it. This is how it should have been explained. Use the given information. That's this stuff. Use the given information as a framework for a phrase in F major. Start a second phrase with a direct modulation into D major. Oh my gosh. My note file just crashed. Hopefully it's still there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, so use these notes as a foundation for a phrase in F major, do a direct modulation to a phrase in D major, and then have it within a first ending, have it continue and modulate to the key of F. Now what that means is, prior to this first ending, no F major stuff occurs. The whole modulation takes place in the first ending. Because after you repeat back to the top and you come through to the D major thing, when it takes the second ending, it's going to have, you'll have no idea there was ever any F major stuff. It just goes D major, D major, D major, D major, and it's done. You have complete freedom in how you're going to compose that D major stuff. And you're free to choose any of the techniques. Again, don't use direct modulation. Um, but you might want to play around with a, you could use a harmonic sequence, you could use a common tone modulation. We talked about today how D major and F major are in a uh, chromatic mediant relationship. So there should be some cool opportunities for um, a common tone. Just off the top of my head, I'm thinking, well, in the key of D major, a five chord is A major, and in the key of F major, a five chord is C major. And there's an E common tone could be an interesting pivot. So look look for those things. Play around with that. It doesn't have to be this. It could be a whole lot of different stuff. 
just start, you know, go through and ask yourself what tones are common between the two. Is there a D in both? Yep. Is there an E in both? Yep. Is there an F sharp? Nope. Is there a G? Yep. A? Yep. B flat? Nope. C sharp? Nope. So there's a few common tones, and there could be a number of different chords that could pivot on those common tones. That's fun stuff. For sequential modulation, it could be that whatever you do right here in the first half of this phrase might sound really cool in the second half of the phrase. A direct um, transposition and repetition, so a sequential repetition and transposition, and so therefore a sequential modulation. Those are the biggies. Um, it's possible that there could be a secondary function. You know, maybe you're tonicizing 4. If I tonicize 4 in the key of D major, I'm going to head to a G chord, but maybe I end up heading to a G minor chord instead. Resolve to minor and then use that G chord as a 2 chord in the key of F major. So, throwing some ideas out there. Again, this is our final product. Your first step for Wednesday is just to show me a, a rough sketch of what's going to happen. Um, that includes composing the um, the whole second section, but not you don't have to voice it out in four parts. A bass line and Roman numerals is plenty, but I want to see what the framework, the big picture framework is for the whole piece. I'd like to see what you're going to do here too. How can you uh, spice this up? We talked a little bit about loops, using 565, using the 464, pedal 64. You could do a number of different things in here and um, working your way into the cadence and cadencing in the key of F. Okie doke. Have fun.